Thank you all so much for coming today. Just as I'm sitting here with everyone in this opening meditation, I'm present with the range of consciousness that's here. And I feel stretched. <laughs> Like the, the part of what happens when I sit with the group is that I'm meeting each individual person's consciousness, both in the, the uniqueness and also in this collective. And as I meet each of you in this uniqueness, just the, the soul lesson plan that each of you are on, at least for this moment for today, is a really wide range. And as I continue to sit with that range and feeling the different frequencies or levels of my consciousness meeting all of those levels, there was a sense of, of stretching and also, you know, the, the and, and wanting to meet each of you in the details, right? In the, the details of, of where you are and, and what's happening for you. And in the midst of, it's like all those details feel like the information, right? That's the, the cataloged history of karma, uh, DNA, your storylines, right? All those details. And what's consistent throughout all of that is love. And so as my system opened up through this very, very tall range and very wide range to assimilate all the details in such a large range, when that seemed to reach a level of satisfaction for us starting for me then being able to speak, when it reached that level of satisfaction of, of being present with the landscape of, of, of everyone here. This just pure eminence, radiance of love is then what comes next. It's, there's such a huge range, huge range, where are we going to meet, right? We're going to meet in the heart, meet in that purity of love for our hearts to commune with each other and from there share the exchange that wants to happen about all the details. So thank you again all for coming to come and play today. So in this meeting place of the heart, even though everyone is in a very different place of their own, their own, their own growth, their own, their own evolution, we all can meet resting, grounded in the body, in the heart. And it doesn't matter if someone is five or they're a you know, retired professor with a zillion published books or you know, there's, it doesn't matter when we all come and meet, meet in the heart. There's a recognition of the brilliance and the beauty that we all are, no matter what the details are. And not only does this feel great, it's also really practical. Because then whoever you're meeting, you can recognize their brilliance. And even if their political leanings are extremely different than yours. Right? As we come into this embodiment, 
there's a deep there's a deep recognition of this love this ecstatic it's I don't I'm not I'm gonna try for an analogy here and see see if this if this works. You know how like in the ocean there's all sorts of things in there, but it's all it's all it's all water. It's all love. Or so I'm seeing it all as love. Let me try and separate it out. So in all the moisture in the air, right, if we're using water as the conduit. Right, all the waters in the ocean, but the water is all in the atmosphere. We're breathing moisture. We're breathing water in the air. Our bodies are made of water. You can find a certain amount of absorption of water in in everything. Right, this water. And so, if we use that same sensibility of the of love, love is it's like this divine divine singing, divine love fabric of being. It's, it's, it's like water in that it's the substance matrix of our existence of everything. And as we deepen into that truth in ourself, not only do we get to experience that exquisiteness of being here in this miracle body that that you animate, but that it's also everywhere. It's everything. And so one's relationship to everything starts to change. And so if you recognize someone, it's just using politics because it's so readily available right now, if you meet someone who has a a different view of the world and you're recognizing that the love here is the same love that's there and the love that animates this is the love that animates that then something different often arises than when you're not remembering that or not living that what I find for myself is it's often curiosity because I can feel the love of that person Wow, how could they think that? Like, wow, that's fascinating. Tell me more. Tell me more. How does that make sense? And then you start to hear another whole view of the universe and how that makes sense from that perspective. And then there's a, there's a bridging that's happening. And we're resting in that deep love that connects where we recognize everything is seamless. Everything is is one single consciousness in this magical play. And when we bring that sensibility to our body, then our relationship inside is also completely different. If food cravings arise, there's a a listening with love. Is this a movement that is, is supporting or is this a movement that is actually a, a, a reactionary movement. And so this deeper sense of love is then permeating. And once food, choices, desires start to actually change as we come into this deep loving, this deep, deep loving,
it seems to me we're just at an incredible time in our evolution. I'm just so profoundly grateful to be here at this this time. And the way I'm experiencing it is this massive infusion of, of light in through our systems and in through our culture and the earth and humanity and and each of you I'm sure have had the experience of receiving receiving love or receiving attention in such a way that was that penetrated so deeply that then your shadow stuff started to come up. You know, it's like that light comes in and starts to show the shadows. And so my experience of what's happening politically right now is the light's coming in. So all the shadows are starting to become visible. And the more that we anchor that in ourself, the more we are um, translucent for that light to come all the way through. That's like where the, well, it's like these, these crystals, right? In that clarity, the light of source comes through and shines out. And we become that same, we become that same thing. As that light comes through us, our bodies change, the chemistry changes, our consciousness changes. And, and, and we, we become like this, where we are then animated bodies, walking source light and love and truth, letting that shine through us out wherever we go. And so the personal benefits, you know, I spoke about this ecstatic, you know, this ecstatic awakened heart. So the personal benefits are, are that, this in, inner, inner landscape starts to change. And it requires a, a willingness to meet shadows. Because the more that that light comes in, the more shadows that are there are going to be amplified for you to see and to love and, and they transform on their own. Sometimes they need attention in a particular way. And sometimes the light, they just dissolve in a nanosecond. So there's a whole, whole range um, in meeting that. And because we're one consciousness, as each of us in our individuated expression open to that larger truth, then we amplify that in the field of our creation. So this human plane, this human uh, earth plane field of oneness is creation. We start to amplify that and then it starts shining and starts to change and influence the whole environment. So as we keep opening in this deliciousness, it feels great, <laughs> it supports your own process, and it starts to change the whole playground, the whole field. And, and there's just a brilliant... I mean, it's just, it's just brilliant, beyond brilliant to me in terms of how this is all constructed, of one single consciousness creating the environments, living the environments, animating the environments. It's one consciousness manifesting itself as that, and then manifesting vehicles, you know, human, human vehicles or cat vehicles or bird vehicles to then experience a uniqueness through. And in doing that, uh, 
I don't, it's like everything has this living paradox of everything being one, but simultaneously being all this individuation that then gets to play with itself. So it's this one singular truth that gets to play with itself, but then mature itself, experience itself, evolve itself through all that interactive play. But then that also changes the environment. Back in Massachusetts, when I was living there, and, and I would travel to Sedona and Kauai and Shasta and, and live in Massachusetts. And the frequencies of the earth are different in those different places. And it was harder for me to maintain what felt good on the inside in my home in Massachusetts because it was, it was different. So I did a healing on the land and all these quartz rocks literally started coming out of the ground up through the, through the yard. You know, I was seeing them all in the stone walls. And then I started playing with the consciousness of the house. Um, oh, and when I did that clearing in the, the property, I found an a old cannonball, you know, and was realizing, oh, there were, there were some battles here, you know, them feeling the feuding of the people who owned the property beforehand. All these things were in the land, and so that started to shift. And then playing with the David consciousness of the house, then the house started to shift. And so then this little, little vortex in Massachusetts of my home started to carry the consciousness of Sedona and Kauai and Shasta because there is an engagement in the oneness and the play and the co-creation. And so your environment, uh, you are not at the mercy of your environment. And the more we step into this creative action, we recognize the wholeness on the inside that is um, impenetrable, unwavering in its purity and brilliance and by resting as that purity that's what then shines out and then influences the field and so when you're living in a particular place and you do that consistently the environment starts to change and when you do that and you walk through the grocery store the field around you is it's it's your influence you know do you get irritated at the person in front of you in the line or are you loving them and your field is going to be different depending on what's happening on the inside which will then have an influence so this is on a small scale when you're grocery shopping or when you're driving and cars around you or on the larger collective political scale, right? So then you start to realize you're not helpless. You're not one small, ineffectual dot in consciousness. You're the divine ecstatic field of existence in this brilliant moment, creating itself anew each billionth of a nanosecond. And if you suddenly recognize that what's generating out of you doesn't feel good, then you, you just stop. All those billionth nanoseconds fraction, billionth fractions of a nanosecond, each one is an opportunity just to do something different. Let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, let go. 
and then see what's there. And sometimes there are storylines that want to be revealed, so maybe you practice that, let go, let go, let go, right? And so I'm just going to make this up to the person in front of you in the grocery store that is bugging you. And so you let go, let, let go, let go. And then what rises up is, oh, the way they hold their body reminds you of someone that you had some issue with or something happened and there was some hurt or something unresolved. You know, and then just thank you. Thank you for revealing that. Okay, meet that. Okay, let go, let go, let go. Then what's there? Right? And so these layers start to resolve themselves to come into ultimately at the core you're gonna you're gonna find that purity. No matter what, no matter how dark, no matter how gnarly, no matter how scary, you're always gonna find that purity at the core. Because that's what's true. So So I'm a strong, strong uh, uh, I don't know what is strong proponent, right? Of like um, supporting people to meet that shadow, meet that whatever comes up. And you don't have to hunt for it. If you keep your attention on what's true and what's pure that which isn't of that nature is, is uh, that which doesn't have that appearance, right? That deep purity, the shadows or twists or misunderstandings, misperceptions, they're going to reveal themselves in that truth. So you don't have to go hunting for everything. It's like in that resting in that purity, the shadows start to bring themselves forward. And so far, so far for me, shadows that I've looked at, is there's, there's just some misunderstanding somewhere. It's like a mis- misinterpretation, a confusion. And so the most horrifying things, if you meet them with the recognition of the innocence that's in there somewhere. It can make it easier to be present with whatever that is. And since it's one single consciousness, There's something about accountability accountability that I want to kind of speak to in here. Accountability, for me in this process of going through shadow, there's been layers of self-blame, self-judgment, uh, and... And in that meeting, layer after layer after layer, there's a, I don't know that I have the right language, because the accountability comes as a part of the the brilliant design of consciousness evolving itself. So there's no judgment There's no judgment in it. It's more like if you want to understand how something works, you need to know how all the parts move. And that that in that exploration, there's a learning of how all the parts move. 
And if apparent harm has come to another through that exploration, it still is one consciousness exploring itself on both sides. And so in the the past life organization, you know, of one single consciousness is having all these experiences, there's value in in an expression having a series of experiences to deeply explore and understand something. And so one will be on both sides of a of an experience in different lifetimes to deeply understand something. And I don't know if this is true or not, what I'm about to say, but I'll just toss it out, we can all listen and see if this is, has any resonance. So it's just an idea that's just appearing of, if on a larger scale we're learning about love and power as if they're separate from each other. And so then there's power over, or misuse of power, or love coming through, or love, you know, it's like, uh, if there are these larger explorations, so then we come in to experience in a particular way, and I'll experience all the different sides, when ultimately love and power are actually, they're not actually separate from each other, you can't separate them at all, in the truth. So that's why I'm saying I don't know if this is true. I'm just tossing this out as this, as to put out a, a concept because the concept is true, right? That there's an exploration that's happening through the individual ex, individuated expression of, of each being and in the larger collective. That there are storylines that one single consciousness is, is unfurling as it explores, explores and, ex, and experiences itself, dreams itself. And so I'm sharing this um, as a way of just giving an example for you in your own inner terrain. If you start to see patterns, when you start getting closer at the root of whatever your storyline patterns are. So it might be you have ten different kind of projects you're working on in your internal life. And then as you track them all back, you start to see, oh, they're all actually working out one particular theme, you know, or a feeling of not being worthy, or not being lovable, or being too much, or not belonging, whatever these core storylines that then we can kind of come down to. And if we can recognize that those are also storylines that are, are actually a, a, a uh, I've been using the word misinterpretation, right? It's a misinterpretation of the truth, but it's tricky. It's like, is it, is it a misinterpretation or just an exploration of a particular aspect? But either way, you can meet the innocence of it and see through to the deeper truth. If you are the totality of all existence and you are the arising of all existence itself and the returning of all existence back to yourself, how could you be not worthy? It's, it's completely irrelevant. How could you not be enough? Well, that makes no sense. You're everything. And if you're everything and nothing, how could you not be enough? It makes no sense. If you're not lovable, well, you're actually love itself. You're the arising of love and the returning of love back to yourself. How could you not, how could you not be love? So all of the storylines we have in our minds actually break down when they meet the truth of what you truly are.
and in the deep recognition of this when the play of those storylines is happening or re reoccurs, one can still meet the play then with love and curiosity and recognition of innocence. So then you don't beat yourself up with an inner storyline of, oh, you're running that story again. So then that's the secondary story. First one is the story, the secondary one is you're running that story. You know? Right, that, those inner, those inner things. And so as you start to just continue to open through this purity, then you can meet those storylines with innocence. You know, someone says something that's harsh or makes no sense or they're having a reaction. It's like, oh, wait a minute, we're all love. We're all love. They got something cooking, okay. That's all right, they got something cooking. Or something comes up in here. Wow, all right, got something cooking. Yeah. I'm just being with that, innocence of that. And in the continual meeting of that love and that light and that truth, things just unfold. They unfold. We're designed. We, as the totality, designed ourselves in this um, way that keeps informing itself and offering the pull and the possibility in this positivity that evolves. It, like the whole creation is rigged. It is completely rigged for enlightenment. It's rigged for joy. It's rigged for ecstatic evolution. It's, 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 a, it's a rigged game. And the more we can settle into that, then it's okay when our little foibles or things come up. And we rest more deeply in that exquisiteness that we are. And so those things come up. And then they get to, they get to unfold themselves. was gifted an experience um, in the last week of being with a pair of shoes that a well-known spiritual teacher wore in their life. And, and I got to see these shoes and see the human consciousness. Like I can see the, ener like the energetic imprinting on these shoes. And... Um, and it was amazing to see how much human storyline was actually there. So to see, look at all that, all that's in there. And then also just this exquisite light. And the, this being has, has passed. Um, uh, and and then came and offered another another beautiful lesson. So it's like this whole cycle of evolution of yes, the humanness, the human form, having that storyline, passing on, seeing the next levels of evolution of this consciousness, and the, just the the continual unfolding um, and folding back on itself. This whole brilliant design as it continues to play.
our culture, at least as I experience it, maybe this isn't true for you, there's a, a whole lot of stress that people are kind of living with. And, um, I mean, just driving on the highway, you could die a zillion times if <laughs> you don't. <laughs> so, um, and so I'm just, I'm just aware of all of that. And the more that we rest in this deeper fabric of our being, there's an ease that happens in through the nervous system and through the body and through the, the uh, adrenal glands. So there's a certain level of fight or flight kind of a thing that sort of is happening. Uh, and it gets amplified at different times depending on what's happening in the, the larger field. But as we keep resting in this deeper place, the 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 physical body starts to adjust itself and shift into a different a different reflection and then you're more available to actually meet the needs of any particular moment so in terms of this you know awakened heart, you know, this integration being the, the topic, is just wanting to point out the, the full range of that, right, that impacts your inner emotional, mental experience, it impacts your physical body, it impacts your environment, it impacts in the collective and the, the, the culture. So there's a huge range and I'm sure it impacts in other ways. I have no idea. I'm just, I'm not seeing. <laughs>